The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my supplier. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my supplier. Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my supplier. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my supplier, Jehovah Jireh. He's my supplier, the Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my Supplier, Jehovah Jireh, he's my supplier, the Lord is all I see, he's living inside of me, and he's my supplier. The Lord is all I want. The Lord is all I need. He's my supplier. Don't let the devil control your financial life on this. On this earth. Don't let Satan decide what comes to you and what comes from you. Your financial destiny in this life was already predestined by God to be big. So don't reject the bigness of money that God wants you to live in. Let's go to uh, Job chapter 22, verse 28 real quick. The bigness of God financially is something that you as a believer now could receive even in a greater measure because Jesus went to the cross. And uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says, you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a grace that though he was rich, he became poor, that through his poverty, you might be made rich. So, so this is a spirit of might. This is an anointing of might for you to become financially rich. Don't let nobody rob that from you. There are so many portals in the blessing of Abraham to become rich and you got to take this by force. Don't live a small life financially. You could sow your way out of any financial situation that you're in right now and financial limitation. You could sow your way out of any budget. You could sow your way out of any financial lack. Don't let the enemy decide what type of money you walk in in this life. Live big. Live big and let the blessing flow the way it was created to flow. God didn't create the blessing for no child of God to live a small, limited money life. He wanted your money life to be grand, spontaneous, enriched, fantastic. He wanted power to flow. For money in your life. He wanted power to flow in your life for money. Let's go to Job 22. And let's go to verse. Uh, let's go to verse. 23. It says, if, if you return to the almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. And it says that thou shalt lay up gold as dust. That's a lot of money and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook 
And verse 25 say, yeah, the almighty shall be thy defense and you shall have plenty of money. You shall have plenty of money. This in the Bible, plenty of money. I want you to think about this people of God. But see, you have to return to the almighty. How do you return to the almighty? You got to return to his system. What is the system of the almighty is sowing and reaping? If you never have anything to sow, you know that you're not in the will of God. Because when you're in the will of God, money will come to you because you're doing what God would do in a situation. And whatever God would do always get rewarded. God's decisions always have rewards because he's wise. He's smart. And he is a pleasurable experience. So when you take on God's decisions, seed are going to come to you. Seed is going to uh, move in your life. Now, you also, uh, when we deal with the will of God, the will of God is a work ethic. So the will of God doesn't come into your life and make you lazy. When the will of God comes into your life, you develop a work ethic. You want to work. You want to have a job. You want to have something that you're doing that is solving problems for someone else. You want to be unselfish. That's what the will of God, it makes you unselfish. It makes you take the eyes off of yourself, your body, your life, your conditions, and it makes you want to breathe, uh, be a pleasurable encounter for someone else. And so saints, look at what the word of God is saying, that you're going to have plenty of finances. There is a financial life that you have in God that you have not tasted of yet. There are money mantles that you haven't worn yet. Abraham wore his. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 2, he is very rich in silver and gold. Isaac, his son, had to be taught to wear his. Because in Genesis 26, there's a famine and Isaac want to run away. Which is often the decision of a lot of believers. When times get tough, they run. Instead of using their weapons. To slay Goliath. I had made a song that said, Take your weapons, slay Goliath. Take your weapons, slay Goliath. Slay Goliath. I had made a song like that. Take your weapons and slay Goliath. Because see, the children of Israel, they wanted to run away from Goliath. But here is David. David saying, no, where he at? Let me take my weapons and I'm going to slay him. And so... But if you look at what David did, he had to sow those stones. When you are a sower, you are a person that is picking a fight with the devil, the thief. A sower is refusing anything other than the will of God to happen to them. When you are honoring God, you pick on his spirit and you say, I'm only going to receive those things that the spirit want me to have in this life. I'm not going to settle for nothing else. Sowing was created by God for you to worship him and invite his heart to do those things that he purposed to do for you. You invite his heart. Sowing invites God's heart and you welcome him in to do everything that he purposed in his heart to do for you. Remember, Jeremiah said, that I know the plans I have for you. They are good and not evil. To bring peace. They are of peace. To uh, give you an accepted end. He he has already um, designated in his heart to fill your life with goodness. Let's go to some. Uh, I could stay longer on this Job 22, but I just wanted to show you a text where it's talking about you having plenty of money. I wanted you to see that. Um, let's go over here to, uh, let's go over here to some, let's go over here to Psalm 126 here. Psalm 126 says, uh, in verse five, no, in verse four, at verse three, rather, it says the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. You got to recognize that God is doing great things for you before you can become a sower. 
And that appreciation has to build up. And so that you could engage him and worship him. And so he could even do even greater. Let's go ahead to verse four. It says, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. The harvest is a joyous time of your life where God celebrates your giving. God will give you a teacher of the word so that you can sow into that teacher because every time the word seed is coming out of their mouth, you have soil to sow in. That soil is rich with the teachings in the gospel of God. And when you sow into that soil, that seed comes back higher, greater, and bigger than ever before. Now, saints, I want you to see this. When you are sowing into the word being preached, the word that's being preached is now en route to you. When you sow into the word of God that's being preached, the word that's being preached is en route to you. It is your inheritance. It is your manifestation. And you can look forward to it because you're engaging it with your decisions. The finances of God has been apprehended, apprehended by satanic deception in a child of God's heart. Because children of God, they often take on a spirit of laziness and slothfulness. They don't want to work no job. They don't want to make no money. They don't want nothing to do with money, but then they pray for money all the time. And that's satanic deception. Children of God have been taught that if you get a loan from the bank, that that's a miracle from God. That's satanic deception. Getting no loan from no bank, not no miracle from God. Getting a loan in itself is not a miracle from God. A loan means I got to pay this back. So saints, oftentimes children of God are being under, uh, they, they are being blanketed by satanic deception financially. So Satan will make it look like you are progressing financially and you're not. You on a credit card. You're not progressing. You storing up debts. You getting loans. You, 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 you have bad financial spending. You buy things because you want to be a part of the trend and look like you're blessed and look like you're rich. And you don't got that financial level to be buying that. Buying things before time is a curse. Premature possession of things is a curse. So if you have anything before the time that you're supposed to have it, it is a curse. You should never want to buy something before time because in the harvest, God will bring it to you. Remember what I'm saying to you, people of God. You never want to buy something before time because God will bring it to you in the harvest. The harvest is where the father will capture all of your dreams and wishes and he will find a way to bring them to you one by one in an explosive manner. In the harvest, the Holy Spirit will find a way to get those things that you desire to you in a memorable fashion. Psalm 126 verse 5 says that you'll reap in joy. Meaning you're going to be extremely satisfied with how God brings back his response to your sowing. When you're sowing, you're not losing, you're loosing. Sowing is a loosing anointing. The seed is a loosing device. You're loosing the plan of God. You're loosing the, the, the grace of God. You're loosing the glory of God. You're loosing the harvests of God. You're loosing the angels of God. Sowing is not losing. You're loosing. So your seed always comes back to you bigger than what you sowed. The harvest is God elevating your life to the next degree of conditions. It's better conditions, more exciting conditions 
When I say conditions, I'm talking about the appearance of how your life looks. The harvest is where God takes your seed and uses it as a portal to minister health to you. God deals with the body and brings the body back into repair. God releases a healing anointing through your sowing. God releases a healing anointing through your sowing. The father touches the parts of your body and your soul that is broken when you're sowing. Your seed allows God to go to the places in your heart where you have been broken down, damaged, and injured and bring repairs, bring restoration, bring a renewal, and bring a revival. Adam was sowing in Genesis without any type of sin or sickness. So he wasn't sowing for those things because sin had not entered into the man class. And diseases and sickness had not entered into the man class. Remember, that when they sin, now diseases and sickness enter into the man class. So Adam's sowing was very different from the sowing that uh, you have to do today because there is a curse that doesn't come causeless. That's what Proverbs 27, to, uh, verse 2 and on said. So I think that's Proverbs 27. Uh, the curse does not come causeless. It's in Proverbs but when we when we deal with uh the curse the curse it gets transferred because there are traits in people's personality that they don't even identify most times that give place to the devil that's what it is when it's talking about the curse doesn't come causeless uh the curse is uh that these are things that satan teaches you demons teach you you're introduced to these things and now you operate in these things because you heard it, you saw it. And um, it is a part of your reactions, your responses, your conduct. So when we're looking at. When we're looking at the curse, we're looking at satanic activity that was imparted to you. You were taught it. You were mentored to do it. You looked at somebody doing it and it became you. You heard somebody say it, it became you. This trait blocks off God's plan. It don't matter how much God love you, you'll still be broke. You'll still have financial lack because these traits are not allowing the portal of God's provision to work in your life. Now, saints, let me just tell you this. Everybody has a portal, but sowers have portals of provision. That means that there's many ways that God going to get money to you. And that's why a sower must also be in prayer because you don't want to be insensitive to God and miss his instruction because he may tell you to go somewhere. I remember one time the Lord told me to go somewhere. And when I went there, um, one of my partners gave me uh $40,000, about $40,000. And I needed that to fulfill uh, some uh, film stuff, some digital things that I was doing for the ministry. I needed that amount of money, but I listened to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost had told me to go to this location. When I went to the location, they had the $40,000 for me. And that's what I needed to carry on something that I was doing in the ministry did it digitally. So when you are sower, there's portals of money over your life. That means that there's more than one way that God will get money to you and large money at that. And so you got to be open and you got to be sensitive and you got to be in prayer so that you don't miss the instruction of God. He will tell you where to go, what to do and where to work and who to connect with. He will guide you in all truth. Remember, he is in partnership with your financial future. So when you're sowing, there's many portals financially around you. You have a lot of portals financially around your life. So there's, there are many ways in which God will minister money to you. He'll minister wealth to you. There are wealth transferences that you walk into that schedule when you're sowing. Because remember, you're listening to God with money. He can instruct you with that money. Therefore, you qualify. 
to handle greater levels of finances. Saints, if we look in the word of God, Isaac, even though he blessed his dad is Abraham, his dad is the richest man, his dad is the father of many nations. But here in Genesis 26, we're seeing that there is a portal stopping demon over Isaac's life. And the only way for Isaac to remove this portal stopping demon, this provision stopping demon, this money stopping demon, is that he has to sow. If he doesn't sow it, nothing happens. Even though he's classified as a son of Abraham, even though he has a father that have broken open in the spirit realm, Satan is able to still work Satan's altar against Isaac's altar because his altar is not being used. You are watching me today. Is your altar being used? Are you a sower? And if you're not a sower, Satan is winning battles against you. So, so don't just go to God in prayer and be told, so Lord, why this not happening? Is your altar working? Because sometimes you go to God in prayer about stuff that's really not his issue. It's just the fact that you're not obeying his principles. Remember Psalm 112 when it says that wealth and riches will be in that man's house. In verse 3, in verse 1, it says, blesses the man that feareth the Lord. So you got to fear God and delight greatly in his commandments. That means that he going to command you to do something with your body and what you possess. See, sowing deals with you sowing your body, sowing your mind, and sowing what you possess. That's what the sowing anointing consists of. So in order for you to have wealth and riches in your house, you're going to have to be submissive to obey God with your mind, your body, and what you possess. Is your altar working? You got to pray to God for a sowing anointing. Everybody is praying to God to give them a harvest, to give them results, to give them miracles. People are not praying for seed. They're not praying for seed to sow. They're not praying, Lord, show me how to sow more seed into your kingdom. That's not the prayer of people. They want the kingdom to harvest them without a seed. And God will have to break his word and break what he has said, his character, if he has you receiving harvests with no seed. Now, saints, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it says, he that soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully will reap bountifully. In verse 7, it says, every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. So saints, um, giving, sowing, it is something that you personally have to have enough word of God in you to, to demonstrate it in your life. You have to have enough glory light from the word. You have to know and understand what you're doing when you sow. You got to understand that this seed is not me losing money. This seed is me losing money. This seed is me telling the Lord, thank you. This seed is also me working the anointing of God and the grace of God in my life to have abundance. It's me working the power and the grace of God in my life to have abundance. When you sow the seed, you must also understand that the seed makes God happy. The seed touches God and communicates to him beautiful words. Your seed talks to God about how great you think he is, how wonderful you think he is, and how powerful his system is to you. When you sow seed, you're telling God, I know that you are my caretaker. And I know that you're going to take good care of me. I know that you're going to feed me. I know that you're going to satisfy me. And I know that everything that I was created to have, you're going to release your glory for me to have it. Psalm 84 verse 11 says that no good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. So this text is revealing to you in Psalm 84, 11, that he going to give you everything for your enjoyment. 
another part in uh, Timothy. Uh, I think that's chapter six, but it's in Timothy. It says that he, uh, it says that uh, he give you all things to richly enjoy. And so you have to understand what you're doing when you're sowing. And then you also have to remember that your seed, it is being multiplied when you sow it by God. So the power of the Holy Ghost takes the seed and causes it to come back to you bigger than what you sowed it. So you're never losing money when you sow. You are losing money when you sow. This means that your financial situation is being upgraded every time you honor God. Every time you honor God, you're allowing him to go in places in your life where there is demonic victory. Demons are winning over you. Remember, the thief does exist. And remember what King Jesus lets you know what the thief want to do. He not only steal, but kill and destroy. Now, if the thief has no opposition from you, meaning that you're not a sower, you're not working your altar. Imagine what the thief is doing to you behind your back. Because while you're not honoring God, you're not sowing into God. There are things happening to you that's not supposed to happen to you. There are things that you're supposed to take authority over. You're supposed to have victory over. You're supposed to have promotion. You're supposed to have increase. And it's not happening. So think about how your life is not really going the way that it's supposed to go. So how many things that God wanted you to accomplish that you're not accomplishing? How much angels you're really supposed to have that you don't have? How much health you're supposed to have that you don't have? How much wisdom that you're really supposed to have that you don't have? Solomon's seed opened him up to a wisdom portal that he didn't have before. He didn't have that level of wisdom and that level of understanding until he sold. How much wisdom and understanding that you don't have working inside of you concerning people, concerning relationships, concerning your time. And sowing was the portal that Solomon used to get there. The Queen of Sheba also used sowing. She sowed into Solomon because Solomon was a teacher of the word. You use the seed to sow into your teacher of the word. And when she sowed, she sold bountifully. Now, let's look at this Queen of Sheba. She's a very rich woman. She's very wealthy. She's very blessed. She's very prosperous, but she's a sower. I want you to see that. So many of you are, you may like nice things. You may want to live big, but my question to you is, are you a sower? Do you honor God? Do you honor the spirit of God for all that he has done for you? And is your honor towards him big? Is it lavish? So the word of God was saying he would sow bountifully in verse 6, 2 Corinthians 9. He that sow bountifully will reap bountifully. And saints, sowing bountifully, it means that you find the greatest level of seed in the form of money and you sow it into your man of God that teaches you the word. And you sow it to express that you are receiving God's kingdom system, his kingdom glory, his kingdom power. And you're receiving his plan for your life to take care of you. God will always take care of you better than you would take care of yourself. He will always give you more than you would acquire with your own strength. Remember, he is the richest. The Holy Ghost is the most wealthiest individual on planet Earth right now. The Holy Ghost has way more than you will ever acquire in 60, 70 years of working and trying to make things happen. The Holy Ghost could give you in one day what somebody has spent 50 and 90 years trying to unlock. The Holy Ghost is a wealth transferring spirit. The Holy Ghost is a money moving spirit, a money manifesting spirit. He knows where all finances is. He knows where all wealth is. He knows where all provisions is. He knows where your house is. The Holy Ghost got houses on earth for you. The Holy Ghost got vehicles on earth for you. Clothes on earth for you. And the Holy Ghost want to bring it to you. Uh, Second Corinthians 9, 8. 
It says God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Many people are not walking in all grace. You know why? Because they're not a sower. If you pray right now, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And the Lord forgive you of your sins. You still don't got all grace in manifestation yet. You get all grace when you start sowing. So if you pray the prayer of repentance, Jesus, come into my heart. His grace will come to forgive you of your sins. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, uh, I think it's chapter 1, verse 9 and on. I may be wrong, but I think it's chapter 1, verse 9 and on. It says, uh, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So when you ask for forgiveness, the grace comes to forgive you of your sin. You're forgiven. But now you still are alive to do what he said. So, so, so watch this here. It'll be an oxymoron if you tell the Lord, forgive me for sinning against you, not doing what you say. And then he releases grace to forgive you. And then you don't want to learn how to do what he say. That would be highly ludicrous, right? Crazy, innocent, insane, lunatic, right? Because you just asked him to forgive you for not doing what he teach. Now he going to teach you what he want. So sowing is a born again weapon. If you take a note, write that down. Sowing is what you do as a revelation that you've been forgiven from sins. Sowing is what you do when you are expressing your hunger and thirst for God's righteousness, his ways. Sowing is what you do when you are speaking to God that you appreciate his mercy and his patience towards your foolish ways. When you are a sower, you telling the Lord, I don't take all of the times you had to rebuke me and correct me for granted. I know that you had to slow down your plan because of my stupidity. I know that you had to slow down what you wanted to do for me because I was in a wrong relationship with that man. I was in a wrong relationship with that woman. I was having children you didn't have me have. I was going to cities you didn't send me. I was taking vacations that you didn't want me to take. I was in places that you didn't want me to go. And so, Lord, now I want to celebrate you and honor you and let you know that I understand how great thou art and how good you've been to me. So I'm going to sow my best because I want to communicate my gratitude. Sowing is when you tell God, thank you for not letting you go to hell. Sowing is when you tell God, thank you for not letting you have no STD. Lord, thank you that I ain't got AIDS in my body. Lord, thank you that I don't got no lung, da lung damage. I know that I was smoking. I know I was drinking, but my liver still working. Thank you, Lord. When I'm a sower, I'm telling God, thank you for not letting the enemy accomplish what he really wanted to accomplish against me while I was your enemy. Seed sowing is saying, Lord, thank you for not killing me when I was your adversary. Thank you for not destroying me when I was destroying your work. I was hindering your will. I was blocking your gospel, not only from entering into my heart, but other people's heart. Lord, thank you. My seed is telling the Lord, thank you. Thank you that you didn't judge me the way I needed to be judged, even though I was doing wrong. Lord, thank you for all the times I didn't teach my child about you and you still woke me up the next morning. You told me to suffer the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not. And, and I, I, I didn't suffer them to come unto you. I ain't tell them nothing about you. I told them about baby shark, daddy shark, uh, nigga shark, everybody shark, shark tank, uh, uh, big great whale, uh, Tarzan shark, uh, 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 uh every, every shark that was. And I never told them about Jesus. But you woke me up every morning. You gave me food to eat. You made sure my body still existed in this life. A seed sower is telling God, thank you for pitting up with my mess. Every time I spoke against a man of God and I didn't have no authority to speak against him. 
Every time I talked about somebody that you was working on, I shouldn't have said nothing about them. I should have kept my mouth shut. Lord, thank you for pitting up with me and not dealing with the sins as they deserve. When you are sower, you telling God, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you have done for me, including my life. So saints, when you become a sower, you, you, you don't, don't choose to become a sparingly sower. Cause sparingly sower don't mean that, uh, you have $2 and you give $2. Cause that's bountiful sowing. Uh, you have a hundred dollars and you sold a hundred dollars. That's bountiful sowing. So, uh, sparingly sowing means that you find the least amount of money to give to God, the least amount of anything that he's asking for. So if he asks for clothes, you find your ugliest pair of clothes and you sew your worst clothes. But a bountiful soul will find their best garment and give it. Or somebody, a guy asks you to sew some shoes, you find your most rundown shoes and then sew it. But a, a bountiful, that's a sparingly sewer. A bountiful soul will find his greatest shoes and then sew it. So that's how it is with money. When you are bountiful sower, you'll find the best money amount that you can sow into God to express your gratitude. I want to thank all the sowers in my ministry, everybody that's sowing to me. Thank you so much. All the partners all across the world. Thank you for honoring me. Thank you for taking good care of me. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for sharing my broadcast. Thank you for getting the gospel out. As you're joining me, I want you to share this broadcast as well. And thank you so much for all of your seeds, all of your honor. Thank you so much for every time that you have given to this ministry. Of course, we have three ways to give. Cash app, dollar sign, Prophet Joshua Holmes. We have PayPal, Prophet Holmes at AOL.com. And we have our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 797-901. Love me Oh How I Love Jesus Oh How I Love Jesus Oh How I Love Jesus because he first loved me. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power.
power.